So uh, welcome. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is uh, just before we uh, end the year. And um, yeah, so this is the last time that we got to uh, talk about Flask this year. I am um, sure because <laughs> like uh, next year, uh, next week, I would be um, away. And um, yeah, so I won't be here. And yeah, it's kind of you can see that uh, I'm kind of in, in, in everywhere now because I'm already kind of like in a holiday mood and um, kind of preparing my plan. Well, it's got to be a mess here um, in in London because uh, we just arrived here for I don't know what Christmas will be. The plan may be disrupted. So um, yeah, so lots of stress, a uh, lot of things going on, um, lots of mess. So uh, yeah, but I still want to continue to today's uh, episode because I just want to um, finish this uh, kind of finish this uh, flask tutorial that um yeah that uh, we can kind of uh, put it to bed and then we could um we could kind of start something new in this year when we start again so um yeah i need to have better plans about how this would work because uh, it really really depends on uh, how covid is like going on because um yeah I, I just found it frustrating when the government are like changing things like all the time i don't know how to adopt because, uh, yeah, so uh, we will see, because like, um, for example, if we are not in a lockdown, then maybe I won't do it in a Sunday afternoon. Maybe I'll do it uh, at a different time, um, because I know that people will be, you know, if, if we have relaxing again, then people may be going out on Sunday that they need to do some grocery shopping or um, going out, you know, just to you know because because we spend so much time indoors during lockdown so um so yeah we, we may have a change of plan if that happened but anyway that's uh, something that we worry about next year but uh, now let's uh, first um finish our tutorial so uh not last time we kind of uh work work through the very basics and we work through the web forms uh, that we have done so uh, we have some interactiveness that we could do that user can kind of put in something and then it will be like kind of a, a, a post request instead of a get request which you normally do when you browse on the internet uh, by that then the back end would uh, receive data and then um, could kind of reflect the changes back to your website so it's kind of become an application now um, yeah you can see that we have a sign in app last time so this is very important if you're building an application. OK, so today we'll move on. Actually, we would actually so we collect the data from the user. But uh, a lot of the time we need to store that data because if someone logged in uh, that well, if someone create an account, then of course you have to store the user data. Right. So you have to have a database. So let's see how this works in Flask, because in Django, remember, we have the model. We have the data model that um, we would uh, we would actually have, um, you know, the like the MySQL backend. I, I believe it's MySQL, not SQLite. I can't remember, but you can use both uh, in theory. That uh, it be a model that uh, basically you can manipulate how you um, store the data in your tables um, in a Python model. So that that's really cool. Uh, but how would Flask deal with the same thing? So um, here, let me see. I need to drink some coffee because I haven't had any coffee yet so it's very important okay so uh, there may be some um, version discrepancy here I don't know whether it's big enough for you to see let me check yeah I hope that's fine yeah so uh, yeah it says that the legacy versions so hmm, if you're using older version of flask you may want to um, uh, yeah look into the link here um, yeah also please support uh, uh, Miguel for his wonderful tutorial and blog. I think this is really great. Um, yeah. So let's see. Okay. So uh, in Flask, it's also used kind of SQL type of uh, database, I guess. Great choices of database in Python. Yep. Also, there are like Flask extensions. Yeah, so they're like SQL or no SQL. It's basically like two schools. Uh, either store things in table and then link them with a key field or just store things uh, like like Terminus DB that you store things in object <laughs> that uh, you kind of link them together. Um, so, yeah. Uh, 
So we are using SQL Alchemy. So uh, yeah, this is for SQL databases that um, uh, object rational mapper. Yeah, so this is ORM, which is the thing that we see in Django as well. Django also have an ORM that uh, is your your data model that uh, you have when you kind of remember we build a questionnaire, right? So those questions and answers like classes uh, in the you know, at the back of it is actually like a ORM. So in Flask, there's a, a, a plugin called Flask SQL Alchemy. So that one is a ORM as well. So it will let you kind of um, manipulate or kind of like work with the database with um, with uh, using Flask. So yeah, SQL Alchemy. Yeah, I have used that before in my data well in my data science years. That uh, is just let you to send queries uh, from your um, Python um, from your Python uh, programs to uh, to your database. So um, yeah, it supports a lot of SQL database, the, the popular ones, MySQL, SQL, Lite, Postgres, um, those things. Um, yes. SQLite doesn't, uh, SQLite in this case, doesn't require a server. Um, yeah, so let's see how it works in action. So let's install Flask SQL Alchemy. So I'm just opening what we were using last time. I do believe we have a terminal here. Yes, just take some time to load. Yeah, we were still running our service. Hey, you can see why my computer is so slow. <laughs> okay, so let's install Flask Alchemy. A SQL Alchemy, sorry. Um, yeah, or Flask SQL Alchemy, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we do have the migrations that we have. So it's kind of similar to what we have in um, in Django as well. Um, yeah, the database needs to be migrated to the modified structure. So you ha still have to, like, kind of translate this structure into uh, the, the, the database. So you need to have a migrate. So um, we need to have that. And yes, yeah, so it's like this part is something very complicated. So it's um, uh, what I, I meant to say is that uh, if you are um, with a web app, so like if you have a back end, so this is actually very important that you have a channel to talk to your back end. And, this is not as simple as you think, because uh, there's like two set of um, two set of technology that you can you have to link them together. So um, so yeah, so it requires quite a few plugins for it to work, and also it's have like a Lego, right? So you have to find the right. Um, uh, no, it's it's not like a puzzle. It's kind of like when you travel abroad, you kind of have the adapter, right? So. So it depends on the country. You have different like plugs in your room, and then you also depends on where you put your appliance. There's also like the, those different plugs, so you have to find the right converter to convert them, right? So this thing's kind of like the converter. So um, so yeah, you you kind of like you have to get the right one for it to work. Sometimes more than one because you have to convert it to another, and then go. Well, I do not recommend you do that because that's dangerous. But and sometimes it's the hack to make it work. Um, so yeah. Use a SQL light state. Yeah, okay, cool. We would do that. We are not using MySQL. Um, so we just follow this tutorial and do what we have been told. So now we have a convicted pie. I do believe we have convicted pie. So let me find that again. Um, right. So, oh, we don't have it yet. It's, oh, no, it's in template this way. Okay. Yep, we do have convicted pie. I don't believe is opened yet okay so this is what we have before um, that we do have a secret key that we set up um, but now we are doing more things with it so we need to have a base directory which uh, we will use the, the um, uh, just use the absolute path of our directory but you have to really like put that in Python because Python will know that you are using it so it's just that using the OS um, Standard library to take the uh, the this directory. So this file's directory name, which is our micro block under our um, our tutorial folder, and then um, we just say that use the absolute path of it because uh, yeah, this one will give you a re may give you a relative one that it may break things. So um, 
Yeah, so relative path is like those with the snake, with the dot, and all these things, right? Like dot dot, which is like parent directory. So those are ref, uh, those are not absolute because, um, yeah, because those are, it depends on where you are, right? Then like here and also my parent directory could change. Also the snake is like, it depends on the user. So that's the user home directory. So it would change as well. So uh, absolute path is like always from the root of your computer. Uh, there will be one root for one uh, OS, so that would be like absolute part from the root, no matter who you are, like what user you are and like uh, what directory you are currently in, is, it doesn't matter, it just gives you always the same one, um, as long as you're using the same OS and same machine. Um, so we haven't saved it, uh, but we haven't finished editing it yet, so we have to add this one. Uh, so we keep all these things, but now we're adding uh, the database setup. That, uh, so this is our SQLite, C SQLite, I don't know how people pronounce it, I rarely use, I use my SQL in progress, I, yeah, I'm more pro, like familiar with those two, but I know that like SQLite or SQLite is uh, really good for tutorials and stuff, because it's, yeah, it's, it doesn't require a server, so, um, yeah, so we could, uh, yeah, we just like here at the, the database URL, or this is kind of like um, a more absolute path that we set up, and um, and um, this is like SQL Alchemy kind of flags that uh, track modifications for us. I think this is kind of like uh, I guess I'm not sure, but like when you make changes, then it would just like uh, it knows that it's have been modified. Disable the feature. Yep. Yeah, if there's a change about the make into the database, it would know. It would it would know. But uh, for this demonstration purposes, it's not needed, so we turn it off. Um, so let's put it in here. Um, I think I'll keep this one. Yeah. So we will see. Yeah. So you have to set the database URL for uh, SQL Alchemy. Um, set the configuration in environment variables because uh well uh, there are lots of reason why uh sometimes you know um if i want to keep my secret secret then i won't actually put it in the code here i would actually set my environment variable in uh, environment file that i would keep to myself um then it would just work i don't have to put it here but of course this is tutorial everything is put in the code uh, because like all these secrets and all this password, you don't want to kind of accidentally push it to GitHub, right? So, <laughs> um, so yeah, always store those things like as an environment variable, like kind of tell Python to look for the environment variable, store them as an environment variable that nest like separated from your code. Um, so that's, that's a good practice always. So, um, database is going to be represented in application. Mm -hmm. So now we have to modify um, the init file. Oops, init file. Yeah, my mouse is super sensitive. It's a Apple mouse, so when I touch it, it thinks that I'm gesturing it to scroll. So, yeah. Okay. So this is our new, new init file. So let me just fix that. Not fix that, but like change it, and then I will see the difference. So let me close some of these templates because we don't need them anymore for now, at least. Okay, while well, my computer is doing something, I got a half a bite of my cake. Sorry, like, yeah, today is just like super chill because this is the last episode of the year and I'm eating cake. Um, mm. This is the cake that I made earlier this week. Um, yeah, I, I have a problem. Like, I bake, a, I bake a big cake. It takes me more than a week to finish. So I put it in the fridge and something like that. But it's not as good as when it's fresh. So, but I still have to finish it. It's my own creation. Um, right, so is my computer happy now? It, my computer is happy now. Okay, so let's go. Let's go to app and init. Um, right, so let me paste those things and we will compare and then delete the old one. So, what we have added is that we added the SQL Alchemy. Um, of course, we have to import it and then uh, migrate. So, these two are the ones that we just pip in store. So, fair enough, we have to use them, right? Otherwise, why are we installing them. So at uh, this time, we still have to create app, which is a, which is a flask uh, object. And then uh, we also call in the config that we had, you know, save in another file. Um, but this time we also create something called DB, which is a SQL alchemy 
and then um, saying that we have this like in Flask uh, SQL Alchemy. So if you're like, for example, if you're like me that you have used SQL Alchemy before, uh, you won't see this uh, SQL Alchemy object here um, because this one is created by the Flask uh, plugin. So uh, so you can see that you just put in an app in here and it will know what to do with it. Um, in Migrate, you have to put in the app and the database. So Migrate is kind of the link, right? So this database just um, telling um, SQL Alchemy that like, okay, I, I have created the, the, the database there. Oh, my light went up, went out. Okay. Yeah, it happens a lot because this light, uh, you have to charge it. So give me one sec. Let me plug that in. Yep, it works now. Yay. Um, yeah, so the... Uh, my my previous light, the old one that broken that is broken is like it. Um, uh, you can plug it in with a um, with a with separate USB wire, but this one it, you have to charge it. So um, yeah, it just went off sometimes, and unfortunately, it went off when I'm recording, so or, or, or streaming. So okay, so now we have them. We just need to have the root and uh, model. So model, hmm, we are doing the data model now again, like what we did uh, with. Jangles. Because like they're both uh, web framework, right? They should do similar things because both of them can let you build a web application. So they should be able to do similar things. Um, otherwise, then there's strong reason why people should choose one over another. But uh, in this case, Flask and Jungle both are very nice. Uh, both work very well. It just depends on which one you're more familiar and more comfortable with. Um, so. Right, so yeah, this one explains a little bit uh, at a database object, yes, that um, at an other object that represent, yep, and um, you need to have this database object, database object because it's kind of tell Python that, um, yep, I have uh, I have the database that I have to work with, and um, and uh, yeah, so this this is actually kind of a window of the data of the database. So it's kind of tell Python that okay, this is the database. We will work with it, and there's a database object. Um, so yeah, also we have the model, so we can work with the data models. Um, yes. Yeah, so here that um, the ORM layer within yep SQL this SQL Alchemy plugin will do the thing for us to translate the model into kind of it will create some queries and stuff oh yeah again my very touchy touchy mouse is doing some crazy stuff let give me one sec yeah oops yeah it's doing crazy stuff sorry yeah so um yeah so uh, this uh orm layer basically is is the th is do one thing right so you build your database model in python it will translate it kind of uh, creating some query that uh, it will kind of help you to uh, create the same thing in your database, um, the equivalent in your database, because your database doesn't speak Python. Um, in this case, you're using a SQL database, so your database speaks SQL, so it will do the translation for you. Um, yep, my computer is freaking out at the moment. Uh, hello? Okay, that is weird. Yeah, my browser stopped working. Oh my god, like there's so many disasters today. I think my computer wants to take a holiday as well. Ooh. Right, okay, now it's going back here. Um, yep, I don't know why it takes so long to load. But, yeah, so now we are creating this data model that we have. Um, ID, which is the key, primary key, um, if you're familiar with SQL. Um, and username is a kind of a 64... Uh, kind of length um, character field, so it's kind of basically a string, right? Uh, email, a string, but it could be longer. Uh, password, a hash, that's also a string, but again, it's, it's quite long. So um, it's quite simple, uh, but that's all you need for a simple locked in mechanism. You only need username and password, right? So here uh, we created, um, so in our mod, so we created model.py and then um, we put in this user class here. So this is, if you have watched my Django tutorial, you, you see that this is very, very similar to the, the thing we do with Django. We create a class of object and then we create the field inside. So each kind of object here is basically a table. So we have that table with 
all this stuff. Um, so let's put it in our um, in our app. So let me copy this. I believe this is a new file. So this is under app. Here that yeah we don't have model yet. So let me create a new one. Sorry, it's a bit slow. Um, text file. Yeah, I gotta have a little bit of kick while we wait for my computer to cooperate. Mm. Right. Don't worry, I will restart my computer during holiday because then, like, I don't have anything hanging around. Hopefully, I finish all the work that I have to do, so I don't have to <laughs> keep them around for a while. Um, but otherwise, like, yeah, I'm just using the last juice of my computer now. So, um, yeah, it's kind of having a hard time. But it's fine. Both me and my computer will have a break during holiday. <laughs> mm. Yep, so paste that and then we will save. And before we move on, let's have a look at the last bit here. So um, user.format uh, return. So this is actually a, a internal function. I, I can't remember on top of my head what this um, internal function does. Um, user dot format self username let's see if uh, there's explanation in the tutorial if not then we'll just uh, figure it out so yep this method is actually okay so it's like uh yeah it's kind of similar to um uh, so it's kind of like how when you print it it would print things out so um it would just print our user um username Instead of like you normally you would have like you know Python object at address x something 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 right so uh, but now you're just saying that oh if I print this object it's actually show user which user it is so this is quite nice um, I forgot that it's called REPR I th I thought it's called like print or something but yeah I my memory was wrong so that's 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 what it does yeah so when you print it out it's actually like user Susan so that's quite nice. So um, instead of just like an object with x something something, which is the address of it, and then you have no idea what it is, but now you know, you have because you just show you the username. Um, right. So um, yeah. So there are like column classes. Yeah. So here, um, so this DB because it's a, a DB uh, user DB model. So yeah, this user. Uh, first of all, this user object need to be a kind of extension of the DB dot model. Um, so you can see that DB is very useful here, right? So you can call in the model, which is a model that you know uh, basically tell Python that all these things. Otherwise, it won't make sense, right? Just a, a Python class object with all these or uh, all these variables. But uh, because we're extending models, so all of these variables would make sense somehow for Python. Uh, and then for db the column is you can set up the column field um and then you can set up the, the the type of it as well it could be integer it could be string with different length um and also whether it's an index or whether it's unique because uh, username needs to be unique right also you emails uh, password may not someone may also like for example if i'm doing tutorial i use one two three four as a password someone may also use one two three four as a password but please don't do that that's not a good practice that's really like a security loophole there for all the hackers to get your, your informations so don't use one two three four as a password um yeah so um create the migration repository so now we are actually uh, trying to do a migration so um, so Flask Migrate uh, will actually provide a um, some commands uh, while you do well except Flask Run. You can now do Flask DB, um, which yeah Flask Migrate provided, and then uh, you can initialize your database, which is nice because uh, you don't have to do all this like database setup yourself, which could be complicated. It depends on what database you are using. So um, this is very nice. So. Um, now we are still using the microblog.py and things like that. So let's see if we can uh, init a database. Okay, so let's go back to our terminal here. Um, and it takes a while and a break for me. Right. Hmm. The 
kick is so good. Right. Oh, there's some error here. What's going on? Hmm. There's an import error. Oh my god. Oh, models. Did I? Oh. Okay. My bad. It should be models. <laughs> yeah, I see, like, I think I talk about, like, how difficult this S with S without S, like, I think really tripped me over and over. Um, you can see now, like, why? <laughs> okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that thing pops up because I, I pressed save too many times and Jupyter Notebook thought that I want to save the HTML instead, but no, it's not. Okay. So... Right. Okay, so now it looks better. It's like done, done, done. So we have created a lot of things. Whoa. So, um, okay, so I can see what it's doing. It created a um, migrations uh, in the in the micro block folder. So we have some new files there now. We have um, some scripts uh, and env.py, readme, etc, uh, etc. Et like all these things that would be useful. So, um, now I have to really do some setup with this um, in the file uh, L M big yeah in it file before proceeding. But I guess the tutorial will teach me how to do so. So let's do that. So um, right. Hmm. Okay, so we should have the repository. Let's check. So let's go back to micro block. We have migrations. Yes, we do have that. And yeah, we do have this all this file that we see got created. Um, so we can now actually do a db migrate uh, users table. So I guess when you do that, then things will get set up, right? Yeah, so actually this one will um, modify that uh, L L Alembic, uh, Alembic file that, uh, you know, the Flask Migrate tell us to modify. So when we do this command, actually we'll modify that file so we don't have to open it and do it ourselves. We just need to run this command. Um, dash M, I guess, is kind of like when you do git, so it's kind of, yeah, added a kind of a message to this migration. So... Um, so users table. So it just means that I this migrate is kind of like migrate is kind of like a commit, right? Because you save something to your data, or to your database. So um, when you do the migrate, you can it's just like pushing things on Git, or committing things on Git. You can add a message. Then you when you look back into the log, then you know that what this migrate does. It's kind of like Git that what this commit does. So um, yeah, this is very nice. So let's uh, go to do that right now. Okay, it will take a while. Well, actually, it's quite fast. Um, detected at the table, so it have done quite a lot of things. Um, and then we have finished the migrate. Um, that's great. So let's, um, yeah. So there's a code generated for migration. Uh, it will be different. So this is kind of like so this migrate thing. You can absolutely think of it as um, a git commit. So uh, you can. Um, so if, actually, if you kind of mess around with Git a little bit, then you know that each Git commit actually come with a a bunch of number, kind of like this. Um, of course, uh, to make your Git commit human readable, you always add a, a message. So this is ex exactly what it does here. So um, yeah, so now you have the migration script, and um, uh, you can inspect the script. Uh, well, I'm a curious person. I think I may do that. So how can I do that? Uh, two function called upgrade and downgrade. Okay. Let's see. Um, so maybe have a look at this. Right. So, yep. Uh, okay, this is not the migration script. This is just the init setting, which is already set up. Uh, but env the pi maybe? Or script the pi.maco. Uh, whoa. 
Okay, so it's kind of like a macro, macro for, for for Python script. This is funky. This is like Python script here. You can see def. This is like definitely Python script, but it's kind of like, I think these tags have like a macro thing. So yeah, this is super cool. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that before. Um, so yeah, if you have uh, you see before like C macro, you know, like all these things that you can have a script that actually is kind of like you, your template that actually you can use another script to manipulate the script. So yeah, <laughs> this is nice. It's kind of like a, a script for the script to generate a script. So <laughs> um, from so yeah, this is Python except that we all these are dynamic that like uh, this one imports if imports else like. You know, there, there's things that you can manipulate the script. So when you use it, it will be different every time. Um, so upgrades, if upgrades, I'll pass. So yeah, if um, so if there's no upgrade, then this will be passed. So when you run upgrade, there's nothing happened. Uh, like your, well, when you write an empty function, you just write the name and then you put pass there, right? If not, then it would just, well, if there are upgrades, then I would just put in the upgrades here. Um, so yeah, this is very cool. Um, yeah, so they say that, and then, yeah, function, yeah. So, applies the migration, downgrades, function, remove. So there's one that's kind of, kind of adding new things, one that's like removing old things. Yeah, so this is like upgrade and downgrade. So, um, yeah, it doesn't make any change to the database. If you do migrate, it just update the script. Okay, it's good to know. Um, so yeah, to make the change, so, uh, kind of migrate is kind of like commit, right? So it's kind of like getting ready so you can push it. And then when you do the uh, flask upgrade, then it will just like push the change. This is just like it. Uh, yeah, manipulating database could be like it. Uh, I learned it a lot when I'm working for Terminus DB, which uh, actually, yeah, we can do basically good thing to, you know, um, to manage the database. So voila, <laughs> it's some, not something like, uh, well, it's very, very nice to have. Um, if, especially if you are kind of building an app or things like that. So, um, yeah, so now we can do the upgrade. So because we have only migrate, uh, which created all these things, all these script and things. So we haven't really pushed any change to the database yet. So we can actually do an upgrade. And um, so we have committed, we haven't pushed. So let's do that by going to the terminal and um, put that in here. So you see that, um, Yes, so uh, we have, so this is very similar when you're doing git, right? So I have pushed this kind of commit uh, to to the git, how it was like a git repo. But here it's just like I've uh, pushed this migrate, I've up, upgrade this migrate into my uh, database of this application. So, yeah, so we have done that. Actually, is it too uh, difficult to see? Maybe like, okay, let me just push it up a little bit so you can see. If you didn't see it before, um, mm. okay. Yep, snack case. What is snack case? Um, Python is using snack case. Um, it's just how you name things. Um, uh, for Python, if you create a function uh, or a variable, it's using snack case, which means that everything's lowercase. Uh, if you have two words, then you use the um, underscore to separate the words. Um, uh, the opposite or the other option is camel case. A uh, camel case is like when you create a class in Python, it will be in camel case, which means that uh, is words are capitalized. If you have more than one word, you don't have spaces between them. You just capitalize each word. That's camel case. But um, you see that like a uh, flask, uh, SQL alchemy, use snake case. Um, so it's just something that, uh, yeah, so for your model class, if you you are using camel case, like this, address and phone, like I said, you know, it's capitalized and then um, and then there's no space between word and each word is capitalized. Um, but uh, when you do that, uh, so when you go into the, the table, then it will call address underscore and phone. So this becomes the case, okay? Um, so yeah, your table names always, you know, snick case instead of the camel case, like your model class. So be aware of that. Um, yeah, because uh, you'll be like, oh, where's my table? Then well, because, well, it's not that it's not found. It's because it's using different things to, you know, different cases system. Um, 
So, uh, upgrade, downgrade, workflow, this is, so you can migrate and upgrade, so it's kind of like, you know, uh, committing to the change. So, um, yeah, so uh, this is exactly what I'm thinking. Um, so you can also do a downgrade. Uh, okay, so it undoes the last migration, it's kind of like um, roll back. <laughs> so you can roll back uh, one level, so you can downgrade, uh, because... Well, if you've messed up in your last upgrade, it happens a lot if you're like really working on a big project. There's like, oh no, actually I break something. Oh no, let, let's roll back. So at least like it, it, it will still be usable, even though we don't have the shiny new features, then you just do a downgrade. So it's fine. It's always good to have a, a, a way to roll back because um, yeah, like I said, accidents happen all the time. And it's good to have a kind of uh, a fail safe kind of mechanism that you can go back, that go back to a previous version that you know that it works. Um, database relationships. So, um, so you can see that here is quite typical. If you are a um, SQL kind of uh, database user, that you know that um, you have different tables. And each tables you would uh, use some like kind of primary key and then kind of link them together. For example, this post here have a few call user ID that actually let you link to the user profile here. So you kind of know who, like what the username and the email of the user is. Uh, that created this post. So um, yeah, I won't explain too much. I just assume that people are f fairly familiar with that because um, yeah, um, I don't know, like in the background of, of people who are watching because there are people watching live, there are people watching afterwards. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, but I won't spend too much time in this one, but uh, do like uh, have a look. There's some like SQL tutorial online. Uh, W3School provide uh, quite a, f a lot. So you can look, like, look it up and learn a little bit about SQL database if you're interested. Um, so, um, so now we have to update our model because we have another table. We have the post table, so we need to add this bit here and also daytime. So remember to import the daytime. So not to self. <laughs> yeah, I I think I forgot it like at some point last time as I was spending time debugging, which is not very nice. Um, okay. So let me, well, maybe it's nice because like I know people like seeing like something that is not staged. Of course, this is live, this is not staged. And you see like I made a mistake like everybody else. Um, so let's put in daytime as well. Um, yeah, I tend to like putting two spaces between class. This is kind of like a, um, a uh, standard for... Uh, for, for code, uh, but it's not necessary, it's still fine, like especially this script, you only have classes. Um, and then also another kind of a standard or a um, uh, a kind of uh, what Python Listo would do is that uh, we put the standard library before everything else. So import daytime first before import app. But well, that's, that's only side notes, so don't worry too much. So let's have a look at what we are doing here. So uh, these are fairly familiar. That's like what we did before. Uh, the user ID because it's a link, so uh, we we don't have primary key, we don't have index true, all these things. But we will say that it's a foreign key, and then it's links to the user ID. So user ID, okay, user ID. Um, just link to that. So this is how we link it. And again, it's just like when we print it, it just like put the post and then just prints out the whole post <laughs> for you to see, to you, to read. Okay. Um, so if there's one thing I could do is that I would maybe print out the title, but it doesn't have a title field here. So, okay. <laughs> um, right. So, um, yep, time, uh, the timestamp is actually an index um, for, uh, for this. So when you um, kind of look up the post, you may want to, um, look up according to timestamp. So there's, that's why it's an index um, and it shouldn't have. Um, yeah, so it's just like when you look up a user, you may look up by name or email, so kind of like that. Uh, but all, all of these should have a primary key separately. So it's more useful when you link it to another field in the database. Um, so, uh, yep, so these things that we've set up, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then db dot relationship. Okay, um, that's a new post field. Huh. A 
and oh yeah so sorry i overlooked that oh my god okay let's put this in um so now user can have the post and it's actually db.relationship and then just link post and then um so back reference is actually like so what what is this user referencing for is referencing the author of the post and then um, lazy dynamic we'll have a look later let's let me do that before i forget so um okay it's, it's getting slow again sorry mm. right 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 so let's come here and yeah put it here right so let's see how this relationship thing works and um so we only need to define to one side so it's one too many relationships so um so f for example this here right so for each post you can only have one user right so that's why you link it by a foreign key um but for each user it could link to many many posts right because one user can create multiple posts so uh we use this relationship uh to link things um so it's like a one too many relationship and um also it's only need to define on one side uh, so it doesn't need to save each post like things like you know oh which author i'm linking back because i i can type the poster author on my uh, user uh, class and then um, lazy argument defined yeah so it will discuss later i guess it's like uh it's only lazy usually means that it's core on um call on demand so normally it won't load until you call it so which i think is a good thing because if someone create many many posts then you don't want to load it every time you load the user you may want to call by demand um yeah if you load everything then it may it may be very very slow if someone writes thousands of posts um so okay so now we can put it into use so it's the playtime uh but before we have to do some uh migrate and upgrade like we did before so we have to add the post table which we have done here so let's go to the terminal and do that migrate just like we did before and now so it's last thing because uh, we are not initializing anything it's already done we just update it and upgrade so let's do the upgrade again and then yep it works uh, so now it's it's been upgraded So you see, this is our previous migration, and now is this new migration. Hmm. Okay. Now, and we're actually going to Python and play with it. So um, let's try this. Um, so yeah, there's lots of back and forth going on here. Um, Python. Okay, I'll push it up a little bit. Oh, it's not really pushing up anything, right? Okay, you have to bear with me then. Uh, import database, which I've done. I'm just put copy and pasting all the script in there. Um, yeah, nothing fancy going on right now. Just importing. And then now we can uh, set up u equals to user. So I created a user here. Um, right here. So I created John, which is our user and then a um and then i just in a session i add it and commit it okay so i would add you add john and then uh, db session dot commit okay so it's something that's done um yep yeah, so it's db session all these are actually commands that you could do things and um you can always roll back which is a good thing commit is that you kind of um yeah because uh before you commit uh can accumulate a session once or change yeah you can actually accumulate all the changes so uh and then you can just commit once otherwise you have many 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 commit which may not be something that you want um so if anytime while working on a session there's an error you can call a rollback and then uh, the session will be gone and all the change in the session will be discarded um, yep so yeah if you don't do commit uh, and end the session nothing will be saved 
Um, right. So we can add Susan as well. So let's do that. And then, um, yep, yeah, add John, adding Susan. Oh, sorry, I didn't update. Is it yeah, add you and then commit? Okay. Now it should work. And then now if we uh, print it out, then, um, okay, so user, so we, I can query users. Um, I should have both of them. If I print out users, yep, I have Joan and I have Susan, and then I can actually use a for loop to print them out uh, like that. Uh, let's see if I can just put it here. Yeah, there's too many dot dot dots there. Hmm. So let me remove this. Is the indentation correct? One, two, three, four. I think there's one more space. Oh, okay. So I enter. Yep. John, Susan, that's that. And then, um, yeah, so the ID is automatically, because it's a primary key, so it will automatically um, set it to one and two. It's, uh, it start with one, yeah, it start with one. <laughs> yeah, this is how um, SQL-like work, I guess. Um, yeah, so you can uh, get one, then you would get join. Uh, this is fairly simple so I'll just skip over and uh, add a post for John okay so I would just get one which is now you is John okay so John will uh, also is John but I'll add a post that have body is just my first post and then the author is John okay so right and then I'll add and commit okay so I'll just do an add uh, at P, I guess, uh, is it? Yeah, at P, right. When well, my mind is still functioning, good. <laughs> and then uh, commit. Okay, so now we should have a post as well. Um, so this time uh, we can have, so you is still John, so we can, uh, so john.post all. So get all the, po uh, the posts that John has written. So uh, now we can print our post. And my first post, <laughs> yeah. Yep, so we have that. And, um, but Susan will have nothing. Okay, so let's change that to Susan. So if we do a get user, oh, where is it? Uh, uh, post uh, equals to, yep. But yeah, I haven't do the thing, right? So you user the query get one. Okay, I'll just copy this. Yeah, I'm being super lazy. Sorry about that. And yeah, so now I'm getting Susan, and then I would get all the posts from Susan. And let's see, there's nothing because Susan hasn't read anything yet. So now, um, if I query all posts, I will see the joins post. Yeah, I will just skip that part. It's fairly straightforward. And then order by so get user in. Uh, reverse alphabetical order so you can also do uh, order by and of course Susan start with an S so that's why Susan go first because it's a uh, reverse alphabetical order so because I have do a descent here so user dot this so basically say that order by username but in descending order and uh, get all of them uh, right so yeah I'll skip over some of these uh, the erase and test the user oh Okay, so I can delete all the users and delete all the posts. Um, and it will be ready for the next chapter, okay. Well, I don't know whether I will continue this. Like I said, I don't know whether I will continue this. Uh, in the new year, we may start something new, but uh, let's do that for fun. <laughs> so, uh, and then we will check that everything is deleted. Uh, just bear with me. And then just tap and then add in this, delete you. And then, right, so everything is deleted, and then every person is deleted. I have to delete all the posts as well. So, yep, same thing for uh, just copy and paste for P and post. Um, I, and then give a little tab, the correct indentation, because Python love indent correct indentation. Okay, so everything's deleted. So now if I check, um, if I do the query again, so users, query all, and users, then we have nothing. 
and then use a post query or is post as nothing. Okay, so everything's deleted. We are in a clean state. Um, so uh, here, uh, what is are we doing here? Yeah, so we have to like do that in Python, but can we do that in a shell? Uh, yes. So you can actually add this in. Um, so this one, uh, add this in the micro block.py. So you can actually do something with the shell. Um, basically just in your terminal without going into Python. So uh, now you see these three arrows, right? So you are not, we are now in a Python interpreter. So you can exit it. So you go back to this is a shell environment. You can see most of the time I'm working with this. So you can see, you can see that I'm my username here and then like uh, what directory I'm in. So this is our shell. So we are back to our shell, but to make the shell thing work, we have to put this in microblock.py. So let's do that. Uh, where is my microblock.py? Uh, I think it's here. Yep, so the, there was nothing here, but now we added more things. So let's delete the old thing. So yeah, now we have the database. Um, we have that. Oh, I think we, we did have that before, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. And now we just, or oh, maybe, in, wait, wait, wait a second. Oh, did I really mess things up? Because, uh, ooh, yeah, I think I did something before, right? Uh, can I roll back file? Nope. Uh, all right, I'll just stay with this. If things are broken, I'll fix it later. <laughs> so yeah, we have added the uh, shell context processor and then, um, and then we have the user and the post um, here that, um, yeah. So we have the user and the post. And um, so we have added in here that we have, um, when we make shell context, that we have, we just need to link them up. We just need to link this. So database is a database and user is a user and post is a post. Um, so yeah, it's just it's just a dictionary that kind of like key value pair. So it's kind of linking all these um, Python objects into something uh, that Flask recognize. Um, so let's let's do Flask shell, and now it should know all these things. Um, let's go here and do Flask shell, and then we are now in Flask shell. So yeah, we have app and all these things. So if we have DB. Then, yep, it sees that ODB is actually my SQL Alchemy engine uh, there. And then user and post it should also recognize that as something meaningful. So user, yep, it's uh, our model. And then post, uh, oh, no S, yeah, it's something that we have built. So uh, it also works in the shelf, and this is super nice. And so that's the end of today and this year um so again thank you big shout out to miguel this is a very nice tutorial and uh, i think if you're learning flask uh, definitely check it out um there's more to offer from his blog uh, i don't think i would go for everything but uh, but yeah this is a very very good uh, resources please go there support him uh, say thank you to him on tweet uh, like share actually i would do it uh I'll do it now, maybe. I'll go to Mikael's Twitter, and then maybe I'll say like, "Hey, I really love your, um, I really love your uh, tutorial." So, I think I would call this a tutorial, like, for now. I don't know. I can't promise that I'm continuing uh, in a new year, but uh, we would definitely continue, um, continue to learn Python in the new year because there's so many things to learn in Python. We will never stop. So let's follow Miguel, and I would actually um maybe send him a message i would do it off screen yes this is a private message i would say thank you to him and um hopefully you would uh, also support him he got a patreon page i believe so uh you know you just maybe buy him a coffee you know just just uh, maybe a five dollars or something that you know just support him um to say thank you um yeah so this is very, very nice. I hope you enjoy the flash journey that we had. Um, and um, yeah, uh, so this is the end of this year. Sorry about like today, there's a lot of a lot of panic and lots of confusion on my side. Um, and then, um, but you know, uh, 
we are we are going on holiday. So, um, what's going on on holiday? That I would be. Uh, I am trying to get away. I have planned this trip earlier on before London drop from tier two to tier four. Um, so I was planning to visit Lays, uh, but I don't know whether it's still going to happen. If my flight got cancelled, of course it won't be happen. But um, let's hope that things are still going well. Then I would be uh, staying with Lays for the Christmas, and then um. Uh, we would also, uh, no matter where I am, uh, I would be joining um, joining the uh, Python Pizza New Year's Eve. So let me show you that. This is the last promo that I have this year. <laughs> this is the last event, Python event I'm at, uh, attending this year. So Python Pizza um, New Year Party, yes. So yeah, this is the last Python event of the year. Um, I hope you would join me to, to, to join the party. Um, yeah, so you can get tickets and then it will be happening on the 30, uh, 31st of December. So it's really, it's a new year party. Uh, we will be counting down. You'll be staying at home, enjoying it no matter where you are. Um, so yeah, uh, the call for proposal, uh, ends today. So, uh, well, I, st I think you still got a few hours to go. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you can, um, so we to talk. Um, there's some speaker already announced, and um, so yeah, you can, I can see some familiar faces there, my friends there. Um, yeah, so I will be also speaking uh, in um, as well. It's just that they haven't announced me, so I'm I'm going ahead of myself. Um, but it would be a very very fun uh, party. Um, so that's it. Uh, so um, yeah, and hopefully I will see you at Python Pizza. And um and enjoy the holiday and definitely we'll learn some more Python next year and um yeah, stay safe and see you then. Bye!